and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 126. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Corp. Hey, everybody. Hey, Norman. Hey, James. How are you doing, man? I could be doing better. Yeah, it's one of those days, ain't it? It's one of those months. <laughs> oh, my. And it hasn't even started yet. Ay, ay, ay. Why isn't back already here? Ah, sorry. <laughs> it's cool, man. I have, it's to, cool. I have to do that every 30 minutes or so. <laughs> Oh my, this is serious. We need to get you back ASAP. Yeah. Anywho, <laughs> joining us today is Lionheart Cartoon. Hello there. Hey there, Lion. How are you doing, man? Much better. It's a lot cooler here today. Yay. Summer's been hitting, hitting hard. Wow. And um, how are you now? Stress-free? Pretty much, yes. Big projects done, things are going well, a little planning left and right, and, well, taking it slightly slower now. Good, good. It's been a while since you were here, and, well, I, I like to do this for good luck. And favorite character, favorite episode, is it still the same, or have it changed? Hasn't changed yet. There's a lot of good episodes that have appeared, but I don't think none will ever have the same magic as the one that, when I discovered the show. The character is still the same. I still have a slightly higher preference uh, in Twilight than Fluttershy, even though they were they're pretty much on the level. Yeah, I don't think right now that there's an episode that just goes slightly above. I can't deny the awesomeness of the fight in the the, the finale, but, <laughs> you know, yeah, it comes down to that magic moment when you realize, I like this. Oh, so true. That, that fight scene, seriously, is a Dragon Ball fight scene. Yes. <laughs> that fight scene, I wonder how much they blew off the budget on just that fight scene, fight scene alone. You know, it shows that they threw everything at it, and <laughs> <laughs> they left their animation uh, thumbs and their, their fingerprints all over that fight scene. It was so well done. I'm gushing, <laughs> sorry. Somebody stop me. It's okay. If I remember right, that fight scene that was in season four, that was done in Toon Boom? From the information that I have, yes, they decided to do some tests. And right now, even DHX is hiring some uh, Toon Boom knowledgeable animators. So there's a good chance that part of that has been made using something else in Flash. Oh. This is interesting because, well, I, I guess we dive into that later on. But yeah, we, we should move on. And in the next topic is housekeeping. Want to meet up with the host of the MBS show? If the answer is yes, then you are in luck. Our host, the amazing and talented James Cork and Norman Sanzo, that's me, will be attending BuckCon 2014. Meet up with them and say hello and talk to them in person. Also, James has something special over there. And what is it, James? It's the Ask Pony Tumblr panel, something that the good people at back allowed me to put forward. It's going to have uh, so, such awesome artists as uh, That Mecha Guy, Captain Horse, uh, Sketchy Sounds, Hazel, ha uh, Hazel Hoofs, and myself. And we all are going to be talking about how to make an Ask Pony Tumblr and make it successful. I don't, un I don't understand why I'm in there, of course, but hey, I'm, I have movies late on my side. Mecha has Ask Robot Octavia, Sketchy and Hazel have Ask Britannia, and Captain Horse has Ask Fighter Starter Speedfire. And you guys can come into the panel and learn some tidbits, some advice on how to do and how not to do certain things, and how having an Ask Pony Tumblr can improve your artistic skills and your narrative skills. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hope to see you there. And yeah, like James has his thing. And well, unfortunately for me, my panel didn't get approved. I didn't know why. I was just saying that, hey, it would be cool if I was there sitting on stage doing nothing. And they seem to say that's a terrible idea. Yeah. But anywho, it still got James, so that'll be fun. You didn't know how to sell your idea. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Marketing material. It's everything. Yeah, probably ne that. Ne Next year, you let me take care of that. Yeah, I'll yeah. help you. Yeah, we'll see, man. We'll see. I hope I can go to next year's one because that will be fun. Uh, so, well, there's that. And let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. Unfortunately, Rom is not here today, so I have to pick up the slack. So in today's news time, DJ Pwn3 releasing a remix album officially from Hasbro. Original music and remix is no stranger to the Brony fandom. We have a lot of talented brony musicians that could give Hasbro a run for their money. And to prove that point, Hasbro has officially announced that they're collaborating with Lakeshore Records, producer of I, Frankenstein and Underworld Awakening, to produce a remix album. 
the album is going to be called DJ Pwn Tree MLP Remix and is expected to be released this fall. Links can be found in the show notes. So gentlemen, what do you guys think? Like ML um like Hasbro is um trying to do a remix album? Well it's a huge well, wink to the whole community and I think it's really nice. Yeah. Uh, however, I have to I have to say, if you want to promote your remix album and uh, say who worked on it, you don't use I Frankenstein as a as a previous job that you have done. No, I mean, okay, let's be honest. Uh, yeah, let's be honest here. The movie itself it's probably not awesome. I I got no the idea movie I is it. a the movie is a piece of manure. <laughs> mm. But what about the music? Because it, from a music standpoint, could this be good? I'm not sure, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, <laughs> it's the kind of it's the kind of uh, music that is very loud, very banging, that makes you want to go, want wants your head to go, uh, you know. But then it's like it, that doesn't go with the action whatsoever. <laughs> so I wouldn't call it as a good example. Underworld is fine. That's a that's a, that's a fairly okay TV uh, movie series. But I Frankenstein. <laughs> However, it's pony, so actually rather looking forward to it. All right, all right. And Lion, what about you? When this comes out, would you buy it or something like that? Well, I probably have to look around and get some sort of sample on it, like I do with most of the stuff that I buy. I love soundtracks. I love scores. I, I still have CDs around. I even have a vinyl record of the Ghostbusters album. Oh. I love scores that much. But at the same time, unless I know what I'm buying, or usually... Uh, I'll try and be cautious. I haven't seen I Frankenstein. I know about Underworld, and uh, it, I still think it's a bit sad that it didn't use or at least ask some of the community's artists to fill up the album a bit more because there are a lot that have very good publicity. They have a very good standing with the with the community that could have both bolstered the sales a lot more. I'm not saying, you know, featuring Mendo Pony, not, maybe not that kind of stuff, but there are still some that do pretty epic music mm. that are and guess commun- but not necessarily remixes, too. Mm-hmm. And guest community musician, The Living Tombstone. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Something like the, that. The, 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 oh, he's on there! He got contacted. Oh, that's awesome. You know, a whole new level of love for Hasbro suddenly. And this is this is not rare for Hasbro to do, because they have been siding with the 3D printing pony, mm-hmm. uh... Guys, yeah, yeah. Shit. yeah. That's, that's so, very recent, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, honestly, for me, I can't wait for this to come out because, well, every little bit of money that we throw at Hasbro is showing them that we support what they do and um, get more seasons out because they know that they're making money and we want it. The more money you throw at Hasbro's direction, the more uh, likely we're gonna keep having a, a series uh, seasons of My Little Pony to happen, and mm-hmm. I am happy with that. True, true. And you know what? I can't wait. Uh, like James says, Underworld and I Frankenstein shiver. And as for me, I haven't seen it yet, and I'm sure the soundtrack would be good. And yeah, Hasbro is taking up the challenge because we are we have already been beating them in terms of soundtrack and songs. So let's see what the K can do. We have like four years uh, okay. ahead of them <laughs> yeah. of making music, uh, fan-made music, and all that. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, let's move on to the next news. And the next news is Nikon Flown and GM Barrow writes their way to season five. As the new season approach, new news of new writers have emerged. Nikon Flown, best known for his work on Kick Patowski, Serban Daredevil, Fishhook and Johnny Tess, has joined the writing staff for My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Also joining the crew is No Strangers Two Ponies. She has been writing books for the series since early 2013. On her panel at BronyCon 2014, Jem Barrow recently announced that she will be joining the writing crew for season 5. Will their writing style fit the show? Only time will tell as we wait for season 5. So gentlemen, James, what do you think? I don't know if you guys read the Jem Barrow books. Mm-hmm. I read the I read the Twilight Sparkle one and I didn't really like it. In that uh, I don't know what uh, what she was going for with that characterization of Twilight, where she wants to stay away from her friends and not talk with them because she's trying to figure out something. But then she figures out that it's her friends that uh, help her solve that mystery. So it's like it's a very weird way of narrating something that we all know. Uh, it's she, she uses the characters in a very very 
not usual way. But then that's for a book. I wonder how is she going to develop to um, defend herself in uh, for for, a, for writing for a TV show, which hmm. that will be interesting. We don't know how many episodes she's writing. Mm, that's true. That's true. I, I can wait because um, from what I understand, uh, the Pinkie Pie book, um, our co-host Dan, he enjoyed it and said it was good. And yeah, you know Grumpy Dan. When he says something is good, then it has to be good. I guess. Mm. I guess I'd be more excited if it was Katie Cook writing an episode of My Little Pony. Oh. Uh, you know, Katie Cook from the comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That would be awesome. I think I'd be more excited about that. But hey, GM Barrow, more than welcome. Uh, we had a lot of new faces showing up this season. And they wrote some of the best episodes. Like Noel Benvenuti, she wrote Mod Pie. And Betsy McGowan, she wrote Power Ponies. And uh, Ted Valentine, he wrote Three is a Crowd. So there are writers that showed up in this fourth season and only, mm-hmm. and they are very good at it. So, yeah, I'm not saying no, 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 don't come. No, I'm saying mm, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna keep an eye on you. Hmm, true, See true. what you you have to offer. Yeah, also, hmm. James, I, I think we're overshadowing Nick Conflone here because he's also a writer for the show and he's done work on some cartoons. And most of those cartoons are not in the same tone as ponies. They're more action-packed, they're more slapstick humor and stuff. What do you think? Well, I... Well, let's wait and see. I mean, you never know. People change the the way they write when they come into My Little Pony. If you're not the uh, easiest example ever, Meriwether Williams. Mm-hmm. She writes for Adventure Time. You will never be able to tell that just from seeing her work in My Little Pony, that she wrote for Adventure Time. Hmm. But she did. She also wrote for Rockrats and she wrote for Camp Laszlo. You, you will not be able to tell that if you just look at her work on Pony. So I'm just going to wait and see what they do. I'm not taking into account their previous work hmm. because then it starts to build uh, unfair expectations. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. In that all oh, episodes are going to be like this and this and that, and then talking about the the shows that this uh, writer has worked on before, and then none of them look like it. Mm-hmm. It's okay, but um, Lion, what about you? What do you think? Well, at the same time, a lot of artists try and challenge themselves to something new, but usually when they are hired, if they were hired, that is, uh, and asked to join the team, it's probably because of their strength. If you look at uh, Kick Butowski and Fishhooks and Johnny Jess, which are very action-based, if there was if there were action-based episodes, someone like this would probably come in handy and make something really good. Maybe they're looking forward to that. And looking at James Barrow, um, little book adventures over there, depending on the success, because I don't know how much success her Daring Do little series had, depending on that, there could be either character-centric episodes developed by her, specifically because she does a lot of character-centric stuff, or maybe just adventure as well. So depending on the episode that's needed, some of their strengths could be taken into account, and as an added bonus, they get to challenge themselves into a universe that they probably know very little about, or in a different way that they haven't explored yet. Hmm. So it's all, you know, look and see, uh, wait and see. I mean, it's it's probably going to be different, but I don't think it's going to be in a bad way. If they're uh, looked upon carefully by those who actually know the show by heart, you know, it's, it's very difficult to actually beat a true and <laughs> pure fan in that regard. But some people who work in there probably know a lot, and a lot more than some fans actually do, and keeping them close might le- might yield very, very good results. Mm-hmm. It, it's a wait-and-see kind of thing, but at the same time, I see a lot of strengths in there that could benefit the whole show. Hmm, okay, I, I see your point, I see your point. And having them for certain episodes might work. And James, to your comment about Katie Cook, I hope she gets on the show too, because she writes well. <laughs> she writes well. Something tells me that she will write an episode, and Hasbro will come saying... You can't put that on television. <laughs> uh, that maybe... word has been banned. <laughs> oh no, that's not a word. What about Josh Sweden? That, that would be awesome, right? <laughs> <laughs> that would be the time when the main six become the main three. Because he will kill half of them. <laughs> he'd, kill half, he'd kill half of them, bring back Flutterbat, and have vampires going out every way around. <laughs> uh, what have I done? But anyway, <clears throat> that was just... No, sorry. That was news time for this week. 
And let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest host time. We don't have a guest, so why as well talk to Lionheart? <laughs> Lionheart, how are you doing? I thought I was a guest. Well, you're a guest host. That's much better ah, than okay. guest. You have been yes, upgraded. It's, it, it's upgraded. Like a, yeah, it's like Lieutenant Colonel or something like that. I, don't know. I need the transformer sound around here. You know the transformation sound? <laughs> No, we can Upgrade. use that. Michael Bay will yeah. sue us. No. And we can use the old 80s sound. Michael <laughs> Bay won't have a leg on you. <laughs> no, funny thing is that actually, you know, that's that's one of the things that the Transformers movies kind of got right. They have the actual Transformer sound. Oh, God. <laughs> hidden in the, yeah, hidden in the background. That's the one thing that pissed me off of Transformers Prime. They don't have that. Oh. Um, I, I sadly didn't follow all the show. Yes, I am here. Yeah. So how are you doing, Ryan? Pretty good. A lot less hot than earlier this week, but yeah, I'm still I'm still doing all right. Awesome, awesome. Rested and all of that. So anyway, before we move on, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering who the hey you are. So mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do. How dare well, they not know you? <laughs> yeah, for those who don't know it, uh, my name is Richard, aka Lionheart Cartoon. I won't say my last name because in English, I, I, it would feel like I'm just unhinging my jaw. <laughs> so yeah, I worked on the uh, very popular music pony video called Children of the Night. I was the main animator and uh, layout artist for that little bit of video. And uh, I'm a good pal with Norman here. And I I got invited and I'm glad to be here. Oh, you're, you're too nice, man. You're too nice. <laughs> I'm just me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're just you, and you're nice. <laughs> but anywho, um, I do remember that you had a recent video out. Yes, that was a commissioned video by uh, Gan Memorials to promote one of his ideas and a few of his plush toys, and I was really happy to work on it, actually. Ah, so how was that? Like, have you ever done something like this? Not on that scale. The Children of the Night was the really last huge scale animation that I got to work on, and it was per- a personal project. But this one really came out of nowhere. It's it, it was very different scope. It asked me to pick a lot of what I had learned on the previous project, including the Brony Con uh, music video, and adapt it to that particular one. The, the deadline was still a bit crazy, <laughs> and seeing as just about the other one came out of nowhere, uh, I had a lot of planning to do on something that I wasn't sure how it would turn out. That, that's the problem with most of every project that you get in freelance. You get given an idea, and up until the midpoint, you're not exactly sure how it will turn out. You have to keep positive, you have to keep motivated, and you have to keep telling yourself, you can do it. Otherwise, it won't happen. If you keep going into the, the pitfalls of, yeah, I'm not sure it's going to work for what he wants it, you know, he's the client, you make it work. Mm, true, 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 true. Yeah, or else you get fired. <laughs> and they go look for yeah. someone else. Usually yes, but he I, I think was in a bit of a pickle, but at the same time, I mean, with uh, with the reputation that I managed to get both as a freelancer and an animator, uh, he was pretty confident, and he gave enough of a leeway to allow me to get the job done, so that's, that's the good part. So mm. what you're basically saying is that he was a really good client. All clients have their quirks. He was a good client in the term that uh, he allowed the artist to do what he does best. So th- that's a lot more than some actually managed to give you. They're, they'll try and take over everything and keep in control. Yes. He managed to give me just enough control so that I could uh, exert my expertise. Mm. So that that's all I, I ever really wanted. I would have wished for slightly more, but at the same time, you know, client, all of that. Mm. You, you okay. have to keep that in mind. All right, all right. So, by the way, this is not an LMLP project, right? No, it's not. He drew inspiration from the show a lot. <laughs> well, of course, he was at Bronicon and all of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But no, essentially, he decided to take that and make it some sort of a spiritual successor. He wanted something that was a bit more mature, a bit more deep, and uh, he decided to try and pitch it. Hmm. Well, from what I've seen, and I've seen it a few times, it looks good. Like I've read, I also read the comments, and yeah, YouTube comments and. EQD comments, they're not nice. Makes me want to cry. May I tackle this now? May I tackle this now before yes, you go any further? Yes, please. I'm going to cry in corner now. I was streaming when 
uh, the newest video that that you guys put put uh, put forward uh, came out. It's it's the trailer for what's the name of the animation? Midnight Children. Midnight Mares. It's called Midnight Mares. Mid- Midnight Mars. Okay. Yes. So um, I didn't have the, the chance to watch it until the, the stream ended. And uh, Norman was reading me the comments on YouTube, and I was like, why are all these... Com- wow, that's that, that that's very unfair. That's very horrible. I mean, I cannot believe that it is as, as bad as some comments are making it out to be. Then I go to the video, and I see that it has way, way more likes than it has uh, dislikes. And I'm like, well... Definitely, these people commenting and making saying this shit, this thing, they are they may be full of shit. Uh, th- there has to be something here at at play. And then I I play the video, and I'm not gonna lie, it gave me the feels. Uh, I I got dragged into it very much, very hard, and I really liked it. Just for the trailer, I cannot stop watching it. And I think wow. that is not just me. There are a lot of people who are saying, why can I stop watching this? Why can I stop watching this video? It's so good. And uh, just just for the uh, the way the video looks and all that, uh, the trailer, it gives me a very strong feeling. Like it's a mix between, uh, it's like Let Me Set Ups with alternate universes and uh, mm-hmm. fantasy elements. Essentially That's the... is that. It started a lot different than this. I mean... Uh... We had to, to make him change the scenario. I wasn't alone on this in terms of uh, co-workers, but I was alone in terms of animation. But when the idea got thrown to me, I, I get notes and messages saying, hey, I've got the next MLP idea. Would you like to work on it? And I kind of roll my eyes and go, you know, it probably won't work. It, I don't say it to, to their face, but I still think it because people like their ponies. They don't like when things change too much. But if it's good... Why just cater to one thing when you can have two good things? So I decided for both my professional freelance career and animator, I say, okay, here's a project. It may not be perfect, but I'm going to give it everything I've got because nowhere, everywhere I'm going to work after this, I'm going to be expected to do this. If I can't do this with this, if I can do it with this, I won't be able to do it anywhere. And I, I worked weekends, woke up at 5.30, got to bed at 10.30, and rinse, repeat, and all of that. A lot of stuff had to be made. I was still somewhat learning Toon Boom when I started animating as well, and I went all out with it. It was going to be looking as good as I could make it and as close as I could make it to to, to children, and that's what I did. The project in itself, yes, it has some flaws. Some people in the comments are maybe harsh, but sometimes they are right. But also, I was really perhaps even too hard, trying to not make it look like it was MLP. Close enough so that it was relatable, but not as close as to either get us in trouble or just look like a blatant ripoff, which is kind of is, but at the same time not. You can't really put a copyright on a horse or a human being. It would be like accusing Disney of copying every human being on the planet, you know? <laughs> that wouldn't work, but you know, it's, it's people like what they like, and if, if it's something different, they don't like change all that much. That's one of the problems. And I had three months to do it. I got approached in April, and the contract started on May, and there was nothing. I had a shred of a script, something looking like a character design. I'm not a character designer. I know how it works, but I'm best at at animating anyway. And the world in itself didn't exist. I had to make the backgrounds, the cities, the look of the trees. There are two worlds in there. There's the dream world, what they call the land of Nod, and the real world, the, the day world. And uh, I had to design both of those places. He had an idea of the colors, but he didn't know if there were going to be trees, if there was going to be rocks, if there was going to be... Okay, he knew there was going to be a sky and a moon. That's about it. And the colors. And the, and, and, and speaking about the, uh, getting like a copyright strike or something like that, all of a sudden you get an, a C&D from the guys who do Philly Fantasia. <laughs> you have taken from our, from our property. <laughs> Philly Fantasia works in 3D. We work in 2D. Uh, uh, okay, okay. This is me trying to take levity out of the the, the, the very feared <laughs> copyright strike that uh, many content creators are actually very afraid of. Um, <laughs> not only you guys got hit by this, but people who like the the guys who do Rainbow Dash Presents they have been hit by that as well. And it's uh, through YouTube and everything, so it's kind of weird. Although I, I will tell you right now, if I wasn't a fan of My Little Pony, I wouldn't have related it to it at all because. 
it, it looks different, it flows different. The characters don't, uh, they are horses, but they don't look like ponies. They don't, I, I don't look at a pony and I am like, oh, that looks like Fluttershy. Oh, that looks like Twilight Sparkle or like the, 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 the skull, uh, uh, horse that you have, the one that looks like it stepped mm-hmm. right out of Book of Life, <laughs> that upcoming Guillermo del Toro movie. Uh, I, I look at it and I don't go, oh, that looks like Princess Luna. That doesn't look like Princess Luna. It looks like, it, it looks like its own character. She is the equine of the night. They're not ponies, they're not horses, but at the same time, he, he wanted like a world filled with mares at the same time. And I wasn't sure if it was a, that bit of a, that good of an idea, but that was not my call to make. He's, uh, he was the inventor. It, it's his baby. I'm not one to go and mess with someone else's idea. I wanted it to work good. I would have, I would not have been a very good uh, quote unquote employee if I didn't make my darndest to make it work for him as well. So this is like a huge promo, looking good as best as it can. You know, compelling angles, uh, choose everything. You know, it was difficult, but I'm really glad that it turned out the way it did. And yes, that that that, that character is essentially a character of the night. At first. At very first, they were sisters, too. Oh, my. That got changed to mother and daughter, and even adopted daughter. <laughs> there's, there's, yeah. there's a little story behind this for that, but, you know, it's... Uh, Spoilers. We didn't want to sell everything. He wanted to show the whole story, and mm. I, I kid you not, it would have been a 10-minute trailer if I had gone away with it, and uh, it, would have, it would not have been done in the time that it was done in. No, no, you don't do it that. It does feel, it does feel like, uh, an animated opera for children. <laughs> that's what it feels like. That's, that's, that's at least the, 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 the sensation that I have left after watching the trailer on YouTube. Is mm-hmm. that it, it feels big, it feels intimate, it feels close, but at the same time it feels grandiose. And love the animation you guys have done. Lo- love the, 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 the color palette that you have chosen. That it does look very oniric. It looks very much like a like a dreamscape, and that's just what I'm taking from the trailer. I cannot wait to watch this. So, and once again, I am overly optimistic about everything. I like a lot of stuff that people don't like. Hmm. Like the easiest example that comes to my mind is that I really like the Michael Bay Transformers movies. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, because okay. I am able to, I am able to see the good I- even in the in the worst kinds of productions. This is not the case. Like the good is right there. It beams through every single frame of animation that you guys have put together. Mm-hmm. Well, there is good stuff in there. It just depends on if he wants to capitalize on them. I tried to do my best to to put it that way, not sell it up short either. Telling too much information is not like telling enough, and that was a very difficult balance to try and keep. And the animation itself uh, was kind of hard to pull off as well. Thankfully, I didn't pick Flash, otherwise I would have been dead. <laughs> but, oh well, no, really, some characters in there, they have, you know, the Nightfall, which is the character with the bones, you know, the Dia de los Muertos. Mm-hmm. Um, she, had, she used to have a very skull-like tattoo on her head that wasn't removed. It was way too busy, but... This is a part of it. This is a character that's made up of so many parts. When the bone touches the line, the outline of the limb, the color changes. The color of that outline changes. Just to get that working in Flash would have made mask over mask over mask over mask. It would have made the character nearly impossible to animate. All for all of what is in there. So I got saved in. I saved a lot of time. All of that was animated. Like I started July seventh. The actual animation. Oh my! And it was done on the twenty third. Oh I was my. planning to have it done on the twenty sixth, and I got finished like a few days earlier. And it was good because I managed to polish some extra stuff. Of course, I mean, as soon as the animation was, on, oh my god, can we add a shot? Can <laughs> we add this? It started getting a bit overboard, and I wanted to correct some stuff. Yes, there's a lot of teeth in there, but at the same time, I was really trying really hard to not make it look like a pony show. I wanted to have something that looked different and felt different. And that was one of the little things that I put. Maybe too much, but it's my it's the first try of that thing. It nothing like except the ponies. I mean he, it's his first production, it's the first thing too. There were a uh, I was the only animator as well, so I couldn't really draw onto my other coworkers opinions and change stuff, you know. I was the the instigator, corrector and all of that in there. <laughs> it's right. uh it, it makes the job very difficult. But you did, you did, you did a really good job. Like, I, 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 I 
got very mad. I actually told Norman about this. I got really mad after the... Uh, he was telling me about these comments, and he was telling me what people were saying, both in Equestria Daily and in, in YouTube. And as he was telling me before watching the video, I was getting angrier and angrier and angrier. And I was like, this is just unfair for, for Lion. It's unfair for everyone who works in this animation. This is not, uh, they're judging what they want to see, not what they just saw. Mm-hmm. And then I watched the video, and that's when I just exploded. Like, um, but my explosions are kind of like, uh, refrain, not huge. <laughs> but that's when I, I went to Norman and I said, I don't want to, I, I hate these people. I don't want Lion to feel bad. I don't want Lion to feel sad. I don't want Lion to feel, uh, uh, demotivated or like hurt because of these mean spirited comments. And yeah, okay, okay, it's YouTube. It's the toilet of the internet. We know that. Uh, but it's not, they are not being fair to you, man. Like you said, you work hard on this. They are not appreciating that. They are not appreciating the time and effort that it takes to animate something. Well, they're not the ones that probably have to eat thanks to the work that they do. And sometimes, even if they say, well, they shouldn't have bothered. Yes, it hurts. And it sucks because you put a lot of yourself into this. Even though it, you try to... I didn't try to save myself, actually, by just saying it's not my work. It's all the work of a client. But, you know, I still put a lot of myself in there. I wasn't master of all the decisions. But I still tried to do my best to, to give him something that was the best as it could be. I'm, pro- I'm not the best out there, that's for sure. But I'm a professional, and I'm not going to stoop myself down to doing some crappy work because I don't believe in the project. Believing in the project helps, but when you see the good in it and use this as your main inspiration and motivation, it works wonders. It's really nice. The pay, it helps too. It puts food on, on the table. But at the end, when people see the the video that's made and there's enough that like it, suddenly I feel glad that I did bother. Mm, true. I mean, uh, as for me, when you showed me the whole thing a few times, I, I have to say that I really enjoyed the story. Like, this, what, what could have been? Because it seems like time travel was involved or betrayal or... Especially, I, 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 if there's time travel, I'm interested, like... I want to see what's going on because that last scene with the teacher and stuff, that's interesting. I want to see what go- what goes on. But unfortunately for me, this is only a trailer. So, yeah, hope this gets positive response by the boss and he wants to make a series or movie with it and we'll be able to see it because I want to... Hell, I want to know, man. I want to know. The most important part of doing uh, freelance is that the... F- Get the cl- have your client happy with it. Yes. Make them feel like they spent their money's worth on you. You have to throw everything in the picture. You have to, uh, or in the animation. I'm drawing a picture. Mm-hmm. I, I I feel for you because I I am not an animator, but I am an artist by commission. Uh, I I work for others doing drawings, and I know the the time it takes to uh, work on something. And then you upload it, and yeah, the client loves it, but then you get some mean comments, people hating on it, and, and, you're, and you're like, and, and what they are complaining is not the artwork, but the fact that it's like an OC, <laughs> or it's like uh, something from a fandom they don't like, or, oh, how dare you do this crossover, and then you are like, but it's not my fault, it's the client. Yeah, yeah. Taras Badonkadonk, the <laughs> children, uh, the uh, tutorials that I make, you know, all those little things were made actually for the fans. If they don't like it, well, you know, they didn't pay for it, but at the same time, they can't really be choosers because mm-hmm. they're really essentially beggars. Mm-hmm. This was made for a client like you do with your commissions right now. And my yeah. goal is to get the client happy, and, but at the same time, if he shows it at BronyCon and he's not happy with it, or there's something missing, or, you know, he feels that the reaction was not good, well, then it's partly my fault because I didn't do my job correctly. He came out of the panel, he told me, really, really happy. He couldn't wait to show it online, and he asked me really, really quick, have you, do you have it up on YouTube? I want to give the link right away. And, you know, that, that's, that's a really good feeling, knowing that the client is that happy. So that makes it all worthwhile. And that's a good thing. You know, I wish there's something that could have been shown a bit more, but at the same time, 
I compressed it as much as I could so that it could get done. The promise I made to him is that there won't be a single part in there that looks like an animatic. He, he, he would have been, originally, he would have been happy with just showing an animatic. Oh. I would not. It doesn't sell as well, unless you have the complete story, or, you know. If it was purely pony-based, and he got the permission for Hasbro to do something using MLP, or the MLP universe, an animatic would have probably been enough. But it's not. So you have to show something that looks wow, and that's what I tried to make. And hopefully that's what I managed to do. It does... It does look wow. And uh, what you were saying, Norman, before about the trailer, not giving all that information, I will tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. I was one of the people who was hooked up when the first trailer of Inception came out. And I don't know if you remember, guys, the first trailers of Inception, but they were not, they had no dialogue. The only thing they showed you were images and like disconnected images of, uh, of the movie, like, uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt with, with the corridor scene mm -hmm. or the, the, the shot of the city, uh, folding over itself and all that. Like, it had no dialogue whatsoever. It was a minute and a half and it was just whoa. And you were like, whoa, what is this movie about? And uh, Christopher Nolan is, some, is doing something similar with Interstellar mm -hmm. because there has been like five or six trailers for that movie already. I still don't know what <laughs> is it about, yeah. but oh my God, do I want to watch it? It's something, it's very similar to what I have when I, uh, when I watch Midnight, uh, the trailer for Midnight Mares, mm -hmm. it's like, it, it, it's, it, it's that, I don't know what's going on, but I want to find out. And James, um, to your point of what I, what I, what I really meant about the trailer was, knowing what I know, it makes me feel a bit depressed because if the commissioner didn't want to carry on the project with Lion, we got no idea if it will go, if it will come out or not. So for me, watching the trailer, Okay, this is the thing that happened. Will it continue on? Will it not? When is it going to come out? Like, ah! Well, I, I don't. Uh, I wish I could answer this, but <laughs> this is something I don't know. Sorry, you were saying, James? Yeah, is that if if he came out of the panel happy, which is usually what happens. Um, uh, acting on the internet is very different from acting in real life. When you are presenting something at a convention, it is very rare that they're going to have people. Booing, screaming, hollering, throwing tomatoes at your face or something when you're presenting it. Because uh, there is, there is this one thing that people get more refrained when they are l in real life looking at someone in the face. However, on the internet, there is that anonymity kind of like, I have a window, I have a computer screen between you and me. I can call you whatever I want. So. People get more loose when it comes to giving their opinions or being more mean to, to, to a project. That's probably why the reaction on the panel was so positive and the reaction on the YouTube comments was so negative. Hmm. It's a distinct possibility, but at the same time, I can't deny the fact that there are some people that like it and some that don't. Usually it's the same recurring theme, you know, they don't like some of the character designs. I slightly agree with this, there's a reason for that. Uh, they don't like the voice acting, there's also a reason for that. But at this point, everything can still be corrected. The, the problem is right now, uh, is that people figure that the trailer has been made with shots of something that exists. It does not. The trailer has been made from scratch. Yeah, see, that's where I come in and I'm a bit depressed because knowing what I know, see, here's the thing, knowing what I know, I'm a bit sad. <laughs> well, knowing, knowing what I know too, things can always get better from there because right now there's a reaction, there's still time to correct and adjust the aim. So, you know, nothing is really lost. Uh, it depends on who he decides to hire for the rest or how much he's willing to uh, invest on this because an episode, even just a, a short pilot episode, would still be a pretty hefty amount, and I wouldn't be alone for this. I'd have to probably hire a team, because mm. I, if I were alone, it would take two years. <laughs> Just to finish one episode. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, yes, I'd be alone, but I also have to redo the puppets. Oh, God. Because I'm not completely... These characters were not made to be animated, frankly. They were somewhat traced of, of a uh, prototype plush. You know how people actually like when their toys look like they do on the show mm -hmm. or, or in the movie. They want yeah. super accurate stuff. That was his goal, trying to get something as accurate as possible. And what can be more accurate than actually drawing from the toy that you're making? Uh, there's a reason so, why yeah. Hasbro didn't um, canonize the toys like how they sh show on the show. There's a reason for it. 
Well, that's why right now a lot of people are making money off of super accurate stuff that they made that actually looks so accurate. Mm -hmm. now, that's the thing. That's why there is a market for this, and that's what he was trying to get to. And he would have succeeded, too. <laughs> but at the same time, it, it, something more elaborate would have probably sold better. Mm. Okay, here, here's one thing that we gloss over. You said that you did the whole project in Toon Boom, right? Mm -hmm. So how was that? How, how was working with Toon Boom? Like... We all heard that you work um, on uh, Flash with children, a mixture mm -hmm. of this and that. So, and Midnight Mares, that was 100% uh, Toon Boom? Yes. How was that? How was working with Toon Boom? Originally, I had tested Toon Boom for a while, and I didn't really like it at first. But as time goes, usually th things get better. In Flash's case, things get worse. <laughs> and... Uh, at the same time, I mean, it was the only thing I could use for children. It's the only thing that I really knew. And uh, we already had the falls, and I already had a nice little build of Luna be coming along well. So I didn't change at that time. But a few research later and a few tries and a few tutorials, I realized, you know, Toon could actually do a, lo a lot of better work a lot faster. So I took it upon myself to learn it earlier this year, like February, March, uh, April, you know, on and off trying some little things, and there are so many um, little little things that make things so much better to work with. One of which is you can access everything from the main timeline. So if I have the eyes, which is if you take a Flash puppet, for example, let's take the one I made for Luna. The eyes are one symbol. The eyelashes, the whites, the, the iris, uh, the pupil, everything. All of this is in one symbol. So if I want to make the eye move, I have to go into the symbol, make it a little timeline, and move the eye in accordance to what the character is doing outside of that timeline. And it becomes a lot of trials and errors. I don't have to do this with Toon Boom. I just have to select it, move it, create the keyframe where it goes, and it's done. I don't have to go inside anywhere. So I don't have to search all the time for a particular symbol or item that the character is made out of. So it, it took a lot of stuff off of my shoulder. And if the character has to change aspect, you know, a rotation, in Flash I would have to take whatever is on that particular layer, create another layer that is on top of what I, needed, I need the object to be, and paste it there. Hmm. That becomes a hassle, because you get easily 50 layers, oh, if not oh. more. And then you have to go into that symbol and hope that it's, everything is in, it is in the right place and then change the, the uh, hierarchy in there. Now, it gets pretty confusing. <laughs> a lot of people manage to work with this. I mean, uh, come on, the show has been made and it's True. pretty crazy. <laughs> so it's possible, but it's time-wasting. Mm -hmm. In there, if a, an item needs to be in the back, I can actually ch change its Z position and keep it on the same layer. My graphics designer teacher once said that digital art is not just digital art, but using digital tools. The purpose of it is that we can save the most amount of time so we can allow ourselves to be the more creative uh, possible. The time that you are, that you are uh, gaining by uh, using all of these shortcuts is time that you can then spend creating something, uh, something better, something that looks better for your animation. Normally, yes. Only that's the problem. It's well, it's a problem and a solution at the same time. It's a tool. And as any tool, you have to learn to use it. I know how to use a stylus, and I know how to use a pencil and paper and all of that. But the moment something becomes more than just pencil, paper, and a stylus, it's something that you have to learn. The huge drawback of Toon Boom is that it is not intuitive. You require tutorials. You require someone who learned it to learn it as well. I, I couldn't, I could never just pick it up and try and learn it. There's so much stuff in there that makes it work well when you actually know where to go. If I just pick up and go, it would not have worked, which is the exact opposite of, say, TV Paint, which I used in my demo reel and in children, which is a tool that is very easy to pick up and learn with. You just, you start. A few shortcuts later, you realize, hey, that goes very fast, but it's not as efficient. Because I draw a line, and then I have to clean that line, and then I have to color that line and inside that line. Whereas in Flash or Toon Boom, that item can be created with the outline at the right color, the fill at the right color, and then you can do a rotation without having to redraw everything, which is a nice plus. It's not as flexible, but it's a nice compromise. 
So basically what you're doing is creating a an asset and copying through all the frames or something like that? Well, when you create an asset, it has its own layer. A bit like you probably used After Effects, I believe. Mm, yeah. A little bit. Okay. Well, w- once you have something in that composition, it goes, you know, it has uh, its layer and its layer only. You cannot change something in that layer. In Toon Boom and Flash, it's a bit of the same. When you have, once you have something on that layer, it's only that. Say, if you ha- if I have the flank on the layer, it's going to be that layer, that the flank's going to be all the way along on that only layer. Hmm. You can still change frames inside of that symbol, and you can still change the exposure. You know, there's something similar for Toon Boom. You can still do some some minor changes, but that symbol will be on that layer only. Hmm. Okay, so basically, it's not easy, but it's progression then, right? Definitely. I used to hate Flash. I hmm. still hate Flash, <laughs> but I don't think I would have gotten as better in Toon Boom, as good in, uh, in Toon Boom, is if I had not used it as a launching platform first. Mm. There's a lot of stuff in there that I'm really glad there is. For example, if I want to have a tapered line in Flash, I have to create a fill from my line. I have no such restrictions with Toon Boom, so if I need to modify the shape of an actual object that has a tapered line, I only have one line to worry about. I can do the tapered line using only one, and that's awesome. So yeah, it was really nice. I enjoyed it. It was still a learning process all the way through the the production, but at the same time, I saved so much. <laughs> it was it was all worth it. Okay, that's awesome. I mean, hearing what you said, you started in what April or May and finished it what in June, July, was it? Uh, I started in May, and it finished. Uh, the deadline was before Bonicon, so essentially July thirty first was the deadline, and. Uh, well, I have everything. I, I still have all the plans. I could tell you everything <laughs> that was done spoiler. during those three months. Well, no, it's just not really a spoiler. It's just that uh, the animation itself, all the bulk, was all done in July. Wow. The rest was all pre-production. <laughs> Looks like Tomb Boom is one of those tools that um, I think the brony animators should latch on because it's something totally new and efficient from what I can hear. It's not new. But it's something that the industry is latching on a lot more. Mm. I mean, for DHX to have positions open now for Toon Boom probably sh- says something. Hmm. Well, I- I'm guessing that the crew got major headaches and heart attacks because of <laughs> Flash crashing on them. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. Flash might be a professional program, but it's in no way stable. There's so much <laughs> stuff that was removed from Flash CX6 to Flash CC that it's almost not worth it. At first, I thought, hey, that's nice. It, oh, it starts super fast. Maybe it's going to be worth it. And as time went on, it's impossible to work in now. There's so much stuff that got removed, things that got moved around. It's like suddenly you open the cupboard to get your cup, and suddenly you're faced with your plates. It doesn't make sense. So it's, uh, <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm familiar with that. So yeah, so instead of all that, I learned something new. And right now, it's worth every penny. Okay, cool, cool. Well, like I said, I, I, it would be an awesome thing if the Brony fandom would have picked up on it. And, well, with all the CND that Hasbro's doing now, at least it will avoid that bit of drama from Hasbro because, hey, we're not using your assets. This is our original well, yeah, thingy. That's one thing. Exactly. Even, that, that's even, uh, something else. But mm-hmm. Even with all Children of the Night use completely original assets. Right? Yes. Well, yeah. I won't lie. We still had, at one point, right in the middle of the production, we said, hey, look, there's a leak. And we looked at it. And we said, oh, that's how they do it. You know, it was an awesome learning thing, but what could we use from this? We all had foals. No <laughs> adults except for Luna, and Miss Celestia, or the guards at the very limit, but they were already done. <laughs> the, car- the guards, I don't know if you noticed, they have like two angles. One that's from the top, and one that's from the side. Mm-hmm. And that's it. They don't move. They can't move. We, we didn't have everything. And there were so much of a secondary characters that nothing had been made for them to move more than that. We, we cared to the very minimum. So we had Foles and Luna. What good would that thing be to us? Mm-hmm. Other than for learning purposes. And we did learn from it. Since not all the Foles had been done, done completely by that point, using the techniques that they used to create their builds, we... we adapted this to our needs. So that that was a big help. But at the same time, what good was it to us for that, except 
true, true. So unless Hasbro wants to send the CND to your brain for learning things <laughs> from their league, I don't think you are going to be in trouble. Uh, um, I don't think so either. I mean, we, we're not even close to uh, show accurate in that the backgrounds are all painted, the characters have filters on them and effects, which is not something that they often use. So, no, I, quite frankly, I don't think we're in danger of getting a CND unless we make something that is so close to the show that it could bring confusion mm. to the watchers. That, that's, I think, one of the major problems that those that got a CND, other than those that tried to make money off of it, mm. had the exactly. problem. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. That's actually what I was going to mention, is that you guys didn't monetize Children of the Night. We can't. Yeah, you can't. You cannot monetize it. It's it's not your character. Oh, true, true. It's not our songs. <laughs> we did yeah, take the by Disney. <laughs> so yeah, you can you definitely cannot put an ad revenue on that video. The people that usually get a hit with a with either a C and D or a copyright strike from YouTube are the people that try to monetize their videos. Yeah. And that goes from uh, from original projects or a bit series like Friendship is Witchcraft to mm-hmm. original mm-hmm. content creators such as uh, Film Flam Philosophy or uh, Hell Even Brony Analysts have been hit with CNDs True. And, yeah. uh, and copyright strikes on YouTube. So it's it's not, nothing stranger. Mm-hmm. And that is why the MBS show podcast on YouTube does not monetize their videos because we couldn't. <laughs> That's why I don't have a Patreon for Movies Lit as well. I don't think that, I, we that, could even have a Patreon unless we had something that looks more original, but at the same time, it'd be have, so much of a risk, you know? Yeah. That actually, the, the best we could probably do if we really wanted to do something like this would be to change, to recreate a whole set of uh, characters, just another character design, just to try and get something that looks different enough that it's not confused. It's doable. It's not impossible, but yeah. Yeah, it can be done, but sometimes you better not even risk it. Yeah, uh, that's the thing. It's scary, like, with YouTube and how it works, like, um, previous episodes of the NBA show used some songs that I thought were free, but were later um, copyright strike. Like, for example, one of uh, Black Griffin's song I used as an outro was strike as copyright and what do I do? I, I had to remove it because I didn't want to have that strike on my channel. So yeah, I mean, I acknowledge it, I remove it. So yeah, done. There are ways. I mean, right now, uh, Taras Bedonkadonk was somewhat of a test. Mm-hmm. This one has been monetized. But what we did is uh, send an email. I, I asked permission to use the song and then I asked, would it be all right if I monetize this thing? And he said, sure. So I said, okay, I'm going to send you an e-sign document so that if YouTube decides to, st- to ask us to remove, we have a proof that you are okay with this. So it worked. That's the kind of thing that you have. But right now, I, I was, we were somewhat lucky. You know, it's someone from the community. They're all right with this. Mm-hmm. But that might not be all right with everyone. But it's still something that you can do in advance. You, mm-hmm. so, it's, you can't do this just because you want to. You have to prepare yourself for this. And that's kind of a bit of a hassle. It's, it's sad because... Technically, you're also the owner of half the content, if not at least a third of it. And you can't even do this. But if they own the song, they probably could just rip it off of you (laughs) and use your your assets instead. It's a a weird thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with that and stuff, it's all confusing. And I don't dare talk about it because we are not lawyers. We we just know a little of this. And yeah. Exactly. No. Just don't you know what we did might have worked, but it's not an incentive to do it. Yeah, yeah. If you do your research, make sure everything is in order before taking any advice that we may give you. <laughs> true that, true that. So uh, I, I think we really derailed from the original topic. So yes, you, I think so. Too. Yeah. So you said the boss really enjoyed the reaction at BronyCon. So what did he talk to you about? Like, what, is there anything else that he mentioned? Like. Um, Besides the reaction and stuff, like I really want to know what happened there. Like I'd love to help you with this, but he's still there and he's still at his booth, and I don't. I didn't have any information ever since Friday, Mm. so I don't know yet. The general feel that you got from what he told you is uh, optimistic, optimistic, positive. We're going forward, right? I didn't get any messages uh, pertaining to that right now, but if it is. 
it's not the kind of guy to just go, well, except just like everyone else, he'd probably think about his stuff very carefully before taking the extra step. Because uh, I don't know how he's going to go around with this or how he's going to go forward with this. He's kind of testing the, the ground right now. He's testing the terrain. Hmm. And that's that's the goal of a promotion normally. It's to test out the, the idea. Hmm. So hopefully something will be done with it for the sake at least of those who actually want to see it. But right now I sadly have no more information. I mean, he's optimistic. He wants something that, like this to work. And up until the point where he saw the very first uh, bit of animation and the background, he wasn't always sure because, well, of course, it's something that's very difficult to make. <laughs> so I... he, up until that point, there was it was almost still up in the dark. All he saw was a few bits, uh, well, a lot of storyboard and a few bits of animatic. Mm. I think he should take a book from Lauren Faust and create a Bible for the show because without that, you got nothing. No, there's a lot of work to do. If he ever wants to give a get, to give a go at the the project, there will be a lot more pre-production needed. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good idea. Make a design document for it. It's always a good. That's that's the one thing that everyone should do when starting a new project. Make a design document. Like, don't throw, don't don't just jump into it. Take a moment to to figure out how uh, the world around it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Lauren Faust did a good job on the My Little Pony universe that we all enjoy because hell, look at it. They keep using that. They keep using that design document, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it's there for a reason, and it explains a lot of things about certain aspect of the character and whatnot, and even the universe. Like, there's, I, I'm guessing there's a page there talking about the stones on the ground and how they should look when against this tree or that tree. It's quite possible. I haven't seen all of the documents pertaining to that. But right now, I mean, with the when you're a freelancer, of course, like on things like this that are very long to make, something that requires a lot of things to go right in order to just get done, you have to cater to the needs. And one of the main need was to shorten the script and get the main ideas of how the world works at least a little bit to start producing a storyboard. And with a few sketches and uh, little ideas left and right, a, a small change in the, in the script itself, uh, things got things managed to move at least a little bit forward. And sadly, because of the nature of the thing, we couldn't create a whole world, or at least determine very precisely how a whole world works, not in a, a month and a half of pre-production. That's not how something like this works. So sadly, it's not complete yet. It's uh, it's barely born. So there's still a lot of stuff to do, but it's not impossible. Like the Nike commercial says, "Impossible is nothing." <laughs> it's true. That's it's just true. it. When someone asked me, "Can you do this?" I said, "Yes," but when do you want it? Because to me, nothing is really impossible. Just very difficult. And if there's no time for it to be done, well, then there's concessions that have to be made. Mm, true. 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 And uh, James, do you have any more questions regarding to this topic? Uh, the only, the only thing that, the only thing that I have left to say is that I'm looking forward to this one. You can take this to your client and tell him that uh, there is pe- there is people who really want to see this happen, and if they are making plushes of this, <laughs> I want one of each. Like, if the purpose of the of the animation is gonna be to promote these uh, toys. Uh, it's working because I want one toy of the the little filly that is uh, crying <laughs> at the derelict house. I want one of them because it's it's so she's adorable. Yes, she is. She is. I love her. She, she loves the rain. I'll just, I'll say this. She loves rain. <laughs> oh my. And you know what? Talking about if this is if this were a toy, I want to buy the skeleton horsey toy because nightfall. That look, yeah, nightfall. Her nightfall looks awesome as a toy. Y- you know what? In the terms of, it looks like an NLC character. It looks like an NLC character. Yeah, it does. If there's a toy, would you buy it? Look, look at it. It's cool. Why not? You right? have to remember. You have to remember one thing. OCs have a very bad rap in this, uh, in the MLP fandom and just in every fandom in general. But remember this: the main six are pretty much Lauren Faust's OCs mm-hmm. because. They are nothing like the ponies from Generation 1. 
Lord and Faust created them out of scratch. Well, originally, uh, Pinkie Pie was supposed to be surprised, I think. Yeah, which Pinkie a, Pie which was... Which is a Pegasus. And uh, Twilight yeah. had the old Twilight Sparkle uh, color scheme, which ended up being on her mother. Mm. Uh, yeah, so and her, you know, and her name was... Changed. Her name was Twilight Twinkle, and the color scheme of Twilight Sparkle's mom uh, resembles yes. that one of Twilight Twinkle. Yeah. Uh, it, it, but the only character that kept the same name was Applejack. Yeah. Every other character got their name changed. Applejack um, is copyright? No, no, no copyright. No, no Applejack was the only one that Hasbro didn't lose the copyright of. Everyone else, they lost it. Like Firefly, they lost it to Josh Whedon and 20th Century Fox. <laughs> I think they still had Pinkie Pie too from their other, from their other things. But still, yeah, the, all those characters in uh, in the video, well, of course they are like OCs. They are OCs. But there's a limited power that we have over these things. I had to respect the designs that had been made and the colors that had been chosen. I had a say in the color of one character, but just one, because it really was gaudy. And I oh, won't God. tell you what it was. Okay, maybe after this, after this. But still, if we got nothing, we can move on. I'm good with this. I'm good with this as well, yeah. So anyway, uh, thank you, Lion, for coming down and sharing your story with us. Because, well, the thing is, this was kind of a hot topic for me because I wanted to know and what's your reaction on it. Because as a friend, I'm here to support you. And as a fan of your work, it looks good. But reading those comments, it really makes me angry and bad. it hurts it hurts as a friend and as a fan of your work i can tell you i wish there was to punch people through the internet button right now because <laughs> i wanted to punch those people in the face yeah. i'm not a violent person but those comments make me really mad especially those complaining about things like the voice acting or the animation or saying this is a downgrade from the animation children of the night and i'm like you guys are not seeing the big picture That's because here, it's you? not children of the night either and they're not the ones working on it as well. So they can complain, but to me, it's just empty comments. Some of them that say, hey, the animation looks weird, and I go to their YouTube channel, there's either nothing, but they're not animators. I say, your comment has no weight. Mm, true. Yeah, they, they are giving criticism without knowing how to give it, because they don't know what they're talking about. And they're giving the worst kind, which is destructive criticism. They are not saying how to... They're not saying this is not correct and this is how you fix it. It's like, this is not correct because it doesn't fit with my standards. Uh, Get the f- That's not a word! Out of here. God damn it. Nah, nah, just no, just no. It's, it's really frustrating. Like, they don't understand what goes behind an animation. Like, doing the work that it does. Like, just for example, you're drawing things right now. What you're doing, it's not easy. Looking at it, like, once it's done... It's ah, it's not easy, but people just come and that's not a word about it. Like yeah, this is not yeah, no, just no. I I wish I could just use Doomblade on those people. Yes. <laughs> wow. So anyway, after me using Doomblade with two mana costs, um, let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> and next topic is shoutouts. My first shoutout goes to you, Lion. Thank you for coming on and sharing your story with us. Most welcome. Thanks so much for having me. Always a pleasure. Mm-hmm. And James, thanks to you for coming on and hosting the show and just um, dealing with my idiocity. Ah, uh, no, Norman, no, you don't. You're not you are thanking not an me. Idiot, ever. First of all, yeah, for starters, you're not an idiot. Second, you're not happy of me being in here because it means you're gonna have to edit the. That's f- not a word. Part of the show. <laughs> Sweetie Belle's gonna have fun. Sweetie Belle is gonna have a field day because I think I, st- I dropped a couple of swear words without yeah, me yeah. noticing. And that is the the scariest part is that I'm going to have a panel on back. It's going to be Ooh. PG, and I am gonna to have to refrain. You have no idea how much, <laughs> or else I'm gonna get everybody in trouble, including the convention. Oh my! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. Wow. So swear in another language. Sometimes it helps. <laughs> yeah, That's not a word. <laughs> That's not a word. <laughs> oh god! I need to censor the word. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry in another language. But, uh, anywho, and also... Sorry, Norman, we couldn't resist. <laughs> it's our fault. We're, we're no the problem, idiots. No problem. And also to Poppy for letting, for telling me that there's a news topic that I almost missed. It was the GM Barrow thingy. Um, I didn't really notice. And well, thanks, Puffy, for pointing that out. And what about you, James? Well, I want to give a shout-out to you, Norman, for letting me stay on the show and not finding <laughs> me yet. 
Uh, I want to give a massive shout out to Lionheart for coming in and uh, being such a such a good guy to to talk to us. Like it's it's wonderful. You're so humble and and and, and such so, so easy to to just talk. go ahead and let's have a conversation. That's cool. Not many people can do that. Hell, I, I, I not, not nobody that I know in real life can do that. Happy oh, to man. I'm glad it's it's fun being around. And of course, last but not least, I want to give a shout out to all the people watching in my stream that are, they are the ones that put up with my, uh, my accent and my stupidity and all that. So thank you guys for not leaving, uh, for not abandoning me and uh, not giving up. Oh, <laughs> you're awesome. awesome, James. Don't deny that. You're awesome. Uh, that means a lot. Anyone? Uh, Anyone? Uh, no, I'm not. You're done? I'm not awesome. Right. Yeah, I'm done. And what about you? Like, any shout outs to give out to? The first one would be to you. Thanks so much for the time you took with me and the listening and all the ranting and the heat and all of that stuff and inviting me to your show again. You have been incredible support. Thanks oh. so much. And we'll have to do another magic game sometime yeah, yeah. too. Yeah, we, we need to do that. Man. We <laughs> need to do that. Magic, magic game? Magic game? Who said magic? I like magic. The yeah. We did it on <laughs> Skype. It was yeah. nice. <gasps> I want to play Magic the Gathering with you guys. We have a we have to play a three headed oh, giant. Oh, that's going. To, that sounds fun. That could be. Neat. Yeah, my 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 Celestia deck has to has to prove its worth. James, the pro tip: we take down Lion first. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, screw that! I'm going to join forces with Lion and I'm going to take down Zeus. Uh, no. But yeah, moving it's on. It's artists versus shout out. broadcasters. <laughs> Another one. Nah, we, we could just have some fun with something else. Mm-hmm. Using magic, there's uh, different ways to work, <laughs> have fun. But the other shout-out is to all of those that are listening right now. Keep listening to Norman. Oh. He's really an awesome guy, and he deserves all the auditors that he oh. gets all the time. Oh. It's it's really great. And uh, another little shout-out to Trish, which is Nanook123, who helped me and keep kept me sane all through the Midnight Mares uh, prod- production. She, she was part of the, some of the character designs in there and uh, to all the people that are right now that are probably back from BronyCon right now and that had fun over there so big, big shout out to the fandom Yay. awesome awesome um, shout out to the BronyCon people too hope they have fun and yeah, be safe coming home and, definitely uh, yes and, and let's not forget the people that are also having fun at GalaCon oh, yeah, GalaCon oh yes that exists too Nicole Oliver was, was with Jan the other day so <laughs> jealous <laughs> Me jelly. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, um, uh, probably James. We need to do something there. We we need to talk to Dave Polsky. <laughs> I want to talk with Dave Polsky so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! I am gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go into Dave Polsky's panel. I'm gonna crush on it. I'm gonna go. Oh my god! I love your episodes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> please never stop writing. You're awesome. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all full farm boy on on him. Uh, <laughs> Let's hope you can control yourself. Any? <laughs> no, no control. Just, just Dave Polsky and more rarity episodes written by <laughs> Dave Polsky because he's he's the best rarity writer. Uh, and anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at wshowgmail.com. And if you like to email us personally, links are in the show notes. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. Um, Tweetbot will retweet stuff. And reply to your messages if you ask her something. And you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet stuff about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. Recently, I Instagram pictures via Twitter about ice cream. And that's good. <laughs> Nobody cares about your ice cream, Norman. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, um, where can they reach you, James? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at James Cork, uh, although I barely have any followers, so you shouldn't care about that. Um, nobody likes me on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on Tumblr, on, uh, uh, on my Ask Pony Tumblr, on askmovieslate.tumblr.com, and you can find me on DeviantArt, on jamescork.deviantart.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Ryan, where can they reach you? Oh, well, you can reach me on the uh, Duo Cartoonist website, well, channel of YouTube, as well as Lionheart Cartoon at deviantart.com and uh, I'm on Twitter under at r underscore s-i-r-o-i-s awesome I'll link that in the show notes and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes YouTube and Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page Facebook page yes we have this Facebooks you can also catch us on phonyvilive.com links are in the show notes so I have been Norman Sanzo 
I have been James Cork. And I'm still Lionheart Cartoon. Now, time to animate some Magic the Gathering games with all the three of us. Yay, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> the magics! Yay! The magics. It is time to make the magics! Yes, I type three mana and let's go. <laughs> anyway, bye bye. Bye. Counter! Oh uh, no. <laughs> I know you're cold. The rain's out tonight. And I know you're looking for a place to rest your head. And I know we said things that were wrong. In the heat of the moment, we got lost in our words. But now you're all alone, wandering the streets, looking for a new home. But homes where the heart lies Homes with the magic Homes where you're all alone But you don't seem to care So let's call this night done And crawl into bed I'll be right here all night So just rest your head Moment is gone, regrets all that's left. The arguing's past, and now the feelings are set. Right by my side is where you belong. Our halls are empty whenever we are apart. And now I'm on my own. Wondering where you've gone Thinking of what went wrong But homes where the heart lies Homes with the magic Homes where you're all alone But you don't seem to care So let's call this night done And crawl into bed I'll be right here all night just rest your head Of me, cause I'm thinking too. Homes where the heart lies, homes with the magic, homes where you're all alone, but you don't seem to care. So let's call this night done. You're crawling.